Steve, you made it. I made it. You mean you made it. I've been sitting here for three months. Oh yeah, that's right. I fell into a vortex at first in Chateau and have been traveling through time for a couple months helping people with their gardens. <coughs> really? Man, that same thing happened to my Aunt Edna's third husband. He's been missing for years. Well, you got a beautiful house here, a beautiful garden, landscape. I know you don't want to mess with anything like annuals that you have to replant every year. You want something low maintenance. Maybe we can take a look and see what kind of perennial herbs we can put into your garden. Well, let's get started. Yes. All right, well, what do you got here? James, this is probably the first garden that I actually did, and it's changed every year since I've had it. Uh, I, it's the front of the house, so you try to make something look good, and then you change your mind. Mm -hmm. So uh, this year I went with some daisies, um, and then oh, these pretty. are actually called pandas. Oh, yeah. And those you're supposed to dig up every year in this climate, but uh, if you put them against the foundation and cover them with mulch, they uh, actually come back. This is the third year for them. So. Oh, yeah. I bet I guess the heat from the house kind of keeps them from uh, getting too cold. Exactly. Same thing with the elephant ears. I did not dig that up last year, and that uh, sprang through this year, so I imagine it'll keep getting bigger if I leave it in the ground. Very nice. What is this plant right here? This is called a mosquito plant. It will actually keep mosquitoes away. Uh, in the vicinity of the plant. Um, yeah. Is it hardy at all? It will it survive? It's not very hardy. I had two of them. This one survived. The one over there didn't, so I replaced it with the daisies. Um, kind of cool thing about it is you can rub the leaves and intensify the scent. And it's a lemon and a musk, and it, for whatever reason, drives the mosquitoes away. Well, thank goodness, because I fucking hate mosquitoes. Yes, I fucking hate them too. <laughs> Let's drink the mosquitoes. <laughs> the fucking mosquitoes. <laughs> And right there's a hummingbird feeder. Oh, I bet you have to water that pretty often. Yeah, I do, and uh, for some reason the hummingbirds don't like it because it's been sitting there for about 10 years. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, I just put one of those in my grandma's house. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Steve, I really like what you've got going on in this garden. Well, thanks, James. I got some hostas, some tiger lilies. Oh uh, yeah, and I see how you've got this wooden fence here. It looks like you just zip tied it to the neighbor's chain link fence. I did actually. It's just vinyl and uh, nothing permanent, but it's never gonna fall down. I can guarantee that. That's right. Oh, now see right here. This looks like it'd be a great area for some sort of perennial herb, maybe a uh, creeping thyme. Now this plant will grow about two to four inches tall. You can use it in a lot of Italian dishes, and uh, it prefers full sun to partial sun. So I think this would be a great area to plant it. Great. Well, I love to cook. And I'm sure I'll get good use out of it. Excellent, Steve. Thanks. All right, we'll just put that here for now. Yeah! What is that? That's my newest project. We should come down and take a look. Yeah, what do you have going on here, man? <laughs> James, are you all right? I am now. Holy cow. Well, let's uh, take a look since you're down here. <clears throat> yeah, yeah, what do you got going on? Oh, I like these planters. There's nothing in them though. Yeah, I haven't decided what I want to do. Some kind of good entrance. I was wondering if you had uh, any suggestions. Well, I did bring some sage along. I think we could plant some sage here, one here, one here. It's a woody shrub. You won't have to mess with it for a couple years. And, uh, and you can use it in cooking, like Italian food. I love Italian food. I love there it too. Go. Just put the sage right there for now. All right, I like what you got here too as well. You got these uh, logs and uh, they're nice border between yours and your neighbor's land, huh? How'd you get them? Uh, I just had a tree cut down and instead of paying to have the stuff hauled away, I'm using it, putting it back in nature, I guess. I like it, I like it. You got some nice portulaca growing around here. Yeah, they started off as small little plants and I spaced them out. And Few years from now, they should all grow together and make a nice border. Oh, it's beautiful, beautiful. And look at this fountain grass here. What kind of fountain grass is this? I believe they call that pompous grass. Oh. And it, uh, it can grow five to six feet tall and oh, really yeah. looks cool at full height. Yeah, and you got a yucca. yucca. Plants, yeah. All right, man. And uh, lamb's ear here. Yeah, lamb's ear is uh, super thick stuff, so I put it against the woods to keep it from overtaking any other garden. All right, man. Well, it's a very well, nice, rounded garden you have here. But it could use at least one more perennial herb, I'm thinking. 
And I think okay. maybe about right in this plot here. Yeah, I've been saving stuff for three months waiting for you to get here. So yeah, I think it's all yours. Well, what we can do is we can put a couple of lavender plants interspersed between these other plants. Now this is going to grow kind of high, maybe about 18 inches, and it's going to make these nice green and silver foliage tufts with purple flowers. And you can cut this and it's going to smell great. I think you would like it. I think it's going to be a real nice match. All right, man. We'll just put one here right now. I think that might just about do it. Wait, I got more garden to show you. Well, I don't know, Steve. I don't have health insurance. We'll just voice over all that shit. Here's Steve's beautiful hydrangea. Did you know that the flower colors can change depending on the pH of the soil? Neutral soil results in white blooms like these. But to make blue flowers, just add organic aluminum sulfate or even coffee grounds to the soil to acidify it. Or to get pink blooms, add lime or wood ashes to the soil to make it more alkaline. Don't use ashes from barbecue pit though, as it most likely contains ash from chemically treated charcoal. And these amendments to the soil can be added slowly over a year or two, so as not to stress the plant. All right, Steve. Well, you have some beautiful and dangerous landscaping throughout your yard here. I want to thank you for letting us film over here today. No problem. And next time come over, please wear your helmet. <laughs> I certainly will. I know you're going to enjoy all the perennials we brought over today, too. I think so. I will. I think they'll look really nice. All right. Well, uh, stay tuned for a rerun performance of Saturday Night's Wild Country. And thank you for joining us here today. James's garden.